Welcome back darling. This week's video is my initial look into some of the interdetailing polishes that I bought. So I'm going to have the DA8 which is the 8mm throw uh, 5 and 3 inch pad machine, the DA12 which is the dedicated spot 3 inch pad machine and then the big force rotation one. And we're going to be looking at the, uh, that's a 5 inch pad, sorry. we're going to be looking to see if we can answer which combination of these products are going to be best for you. Now I think conventional wisdom would say that the force rotation and the spot one here are going to be the, the combination that you would probably want. But is that the case? This DA8 is mighty. It's got a lot of torque. So I really want to see how this handles um, 5 inch pads in terms of comparisons to the uh, force rotation and how it handles 3 inch pads compared to the DA12 and hopefully give you some solid advice at the end. Stick around, stay tuned. This is going to be quite a, a detailed video in places, but I'll put chapters in so you can skip all around. Thanks very much. Enjoy the show. Let me first introduce you to the test bed for the video. It's an E46 M3 that's come back from a body shop with absolutely appalling results. There's bad paint, there's sanding marks, there's poor polishing. Yeah, it's a brilliant candidate for the video though. Now the only way to really safely deal with this is by wet sanding it. So this is 2000 grit followed by 3000 grit. This sort of area, these tight spaces, this is exactly what a three inch pad is made for. You see that they've got lots of space to move around. You go for a five inch, five inch pad's too big and the shapes make it really hard to work. However, it won't stall out on the force rotation one, so that's what the test is going to be here. But we're going to try, going to try it with, um, going to try it with the three-inch pads on the DA8 and on the DA12. And what I'm using here is the DA8. So after just uh, priming the pad, then I'm getting into it. The easiest way to tell the difference between when I'm using the DA8 and the DA12 is that the DA8 has a red ring around the housing nearest the pad. The DA12, as you'll see in a minute, doesn't. Which is what I'm just about to start using here. Exactly the same pad. I swapped it over from one machine to the other. It's a Rupes yellow foam. And uh, yeah, this is the, the 12 inch, so the, the DA12, the three inch pad with the 12 mil throw. I'm just wiping down here with one of those uh, ultra soft plush yellow towels from Interdetailing. Links to that and all the polishes are down below in the description. The two, they feel very different. They will work very really. the, um The DA8 feels way more powerful, a bit bigger, more powerful, smaller throw for sure. But it's interesting, I was expecting the DA12 to be like way better. It's bigger throw, but it's different. So now I'm going to try it with the uh, force rotation, see what we get on there. So this is the test. This is a really complex shape. Where would you use it? I, I mean, you, I would never normally do this, but this is a good test for the um, for, for force rotation, right? Yeah, this felt really weird when I started doing it, using such a big pad and knowing that I was going to do it in an area where it wouldn't really work particularly well. I took the grill out, obviously, that helped a lot, um, but I was apprehensive and I thought, no, I was going to get into it, and it worked. But I'm going to slow it right down here to show you something. You can really see the polisher kicking, and it's taking me for a bit of a walk. However, I got on top of that, and after I got that and kind of understood how to handle the machine a bit better, it was really smooth and really consistent. So it is good, you just have to understand how to use the machine. And talking of using the machine, if you're going to buy one of these, click the uh, links below. There are affiliate links, I get everything for kickback, you support the channel at no extra cost to you. That's more vibey, 100%, but very effective. So wipe. It's gonna be as good as it can be. So <clears throat> I would still say three inch pads are better for this sort of shape. And I need to come back and do this bit now. This is more manageable. The question is, do I want the 12 or the eight? Well, I'm gonna do on both. Do a bit of both and see what we get to. Doing them both again, I kind of got a feel for the DAA a bit more. But I thought now I'm going to go over and do the back. So I'm going to show you what we were up against there. So you can kind of see here that the reflection is pretty dull. And actually that line there is wet sanding. 
that. So this is this is before I done anything. How flat it looks. Also, just how bad that is. This year, to see the sheer horrendousness. Of this is all pigtails, right? Now, I think we can all agree that Stevie Wonder is working in a body shop because you can no way let that go past quality control, can you? I mean, it's absolutely awful. It doesn't look like they even inspected it, does it? Anyway, wet sanding that all back again so I can get back into the polishing. Now, I'm starting off with the DA8 up high there, and I'm going to do the bottom part with the DA12. Now, we know the bottom part was worse, however, I wet sanded it to make it fairly even, and I'm interested to see if the DA12 with its 12mm throw has more cut than the more powerful DA8. I'm looking at this, and it, to me, see more worrying down the bottom here, I think the DA8 got that clearer. So I'm going to redo, well, do the bottom part, a little bit to pick up there, and I'm going to do it with the DA8 on that three inch pad because it's really good. One of the big observations I've got about this DA8 is just how much smoother it is than my DAS6 Pro with a three inch pad on. It's counterbalanced really, really well for this and it's so much easier to handle. Now on my inspection there, I can see that that seems to have done what I was hoping it was gonna do. It's cleared up the paint, the finish is really good. Um, so I'm gonna have a bit more of an experiment here with the DA12 again. Just wanna get a bit more time on the machine uh, to see if my opinion that it's forming is kind of justified or not. And after that, I wanna use the force rotation in the kind of spaces you'd expect to be using the force rotation big flat panels trying to get a bit of cut and seeing what the difference is here between the two. Talking of which, here we go. This is the result from one pass with S20 black on a Rupes yellow foam, no wet sanding there. And this is the bottom bit, which I haven't yet touched. So that's kind of the same level of swirling and marking we were dealing with. And that's the clarity I got from the force rotation up top. So you can see there, there's a bit of edge work that I need to do. Mm. But the main thing is I'm now gonna give the DA8 with the exact same pad. I literally swapped it over from one machine to the other. The same sort of area to work on and give that a go to compare the level of cut and results we're getting. And that bottom half is not as clear, is it? No way near as clear as the top half. Now for me, I didn't show it, I didn't get any footage of it, but the uh, marring and swirling was equally as bad on both parts. So this really demonstrates to me the extra cut that you can get from a force rotation machine. I thought that was kind of hype, and I don't think it is. It is incredibly capable, that machine, and very easy to use. So I'm gonna have to go and do this bit again, and in which case that's gonna be a hit with the force rotation. Before we get into a detailed look at each machine, I wanted to demonstrate to you the difference in sizes between the DA8 and the 12 and the Nano and how that affects their ability to work in intricate spaces. Let's have a look at these two here. This is the DA8 and this is the DA12, the three inch polisher with the 12 inch throw. Um, key things to look at here, the backing plates we see the one on the DA8, this is for the three inch pad here. It's much thicker than this. Um, and that's because it's heavier and it's counterbalanced for running a smaller pad on the bigger machine, um, which is useful because what the problem that I found with the Dash 6 Pro is it had this smaller pad on it and it vibrated massively. That's gone here, this is different. So let's have a look here now, turning these over. Bearing in mind, these are both for three inch pads this backing plate is about seven and a half centimeters just about and this one is about seven now what i'm finding that material that comes out at is this covers a far bigger area of the pad and therefore you get a, a more even pressure i'm using the rupes um, foam yellow foams a lot that's what i like to use and i find that this especially as they're flared pads 
has kind of less and less pressure at the edges so you get a smaller working area of the pad this one seems to give you a much more even spread right up towards the edges just as it flares so that's a nice thing this cut this kind of fills the whole of the velcro backing plate on uh, a rupes yellow foam three inch pad and this one doesn't in terms of weight and ergonomics I have got the exact weights, but I actually don't think they're that important. These two, they feel really comparable. They have very, very similar um, um, kind of characteristics. The length of these two bodies are about the same as you can see. Uh, this is a bit skinnier. I'll turn it over, you can have a look there, a bit skinnier, but not by a whole lot. Okay? There's not a huge difference in the ergonomics of it. It really is down to the shroud. Now, that's where the biggest difference is. You can see here, because this is done, the DAA is designed to take the bigger pad uh, of the five inch backing plate too, that the shroud is about 10 centimeters or so. Here on the, uh, on the DA12, you're looking at about eight, maybe seven and a half at a push, seven and a half to eight. I haven't found that this is any worse for it that I don't think this allows you to get in so much tighter than this one does to the point that when you're really running out of space here you'd probably switch to a nano rather than going over to this now the force rotation one's a bit different and I say that in the sense that it's got this handle here that comes up and down uh, if you want it to it's adjustable here loosen it off with an allen key and it pops up so you can have it in various different positions or you can have it down and put your hand across the top I actually find it's probably best when this is off entirely. You get like a more, a slimmer grip. Um, this is quite cumbersome, gets in the way. Um, whereas this kind of gets your hand over the edge and you just feel like you've got a lot more control over it. I haven't found that I needed it up and using it like a D-loop, but it, it's nice that it's there. It's a useful benefit at the very least. And the fact that it's removable, and when it is removed, there are just little plugs, vanity plugs to go in over the side. I think that's really good. Speed wise or trigger wise, it's done um, by a traditional kind of like a more like a traditional power tool um, push down the trigger rather than like a switch, and then you push and lock with the uh, button on the side there to get it going. Speed is adjusted here, really straightforward. Something that I do like is let's just articulate this the flex has got this kind of ball joint on the back here, as well as the shrouding. This I found great, not just when you're packing it away, but you can feel it doesn't get pulled around by the back. And you may have experienced this uh, if, if you do polishing, but if you haven't, some tools, you feel like the uh, power flex is kind of preventing you from moving it the way you want to. This gives you just a little bit more articulation and there's a really nice feature. And there's also the option of adding on this handle on the side. So you could take the, this loop off and then you could put this on the side, either side, depending if you want to, uh, if that helps you get a bit more control. I can see this one being a bit more useful than this overall loop. But again, I prefer my hand over the uh, thing to get a bit more control. And finally, with this one, you get a six inch backing plate as well as the five inch, which is fitted here, and a spare set of brushes. Uh, the brushes, just in case you're wondering, are for the electric motor. Now, something that's worth considering, and just mentioning again, I find that this doesn't spin particularly quickly. And that, when using in conjunction with the pad washer, the Lake Country pad washer that I have, this one doesn't dry out the pads. So it's worth noting that you'd have to put it on something else to spin dry the pads up. Well, that was interesting. Uh, hopefully it came across. It was interesting to me doing it. That DA8 is an absolute beast. Um, really torquey. Fantastic, got, I got no pad stalling on that at all, which is phenomenal, especially compared to my um, Dastix Pro that I currently use, which stalls quite frequently, even when the five inch pads. Uh, benefit of this over the Dastix Pro was that the, the Dastix Pro comes with a five and six inch backing plate. <clears throat> to get the three inch one, you end up using one that's like the one on this, very thin, but this is counterbalanced and designed for that. <clears throat> the DA, this is the DA12. The DA8 has this thicker pad as I showed you, or thicker back of the planning plate. And that makes a huge difference because the vibes on the DAS6 Pro are, with a three inch pad, are horrendous. So of, the, of these machines, for three inch work, I actually find the DA8 better. Now, 
yes it has a bigger shroud but it's more powerful and so with the three inch pads on this felt way more stable and uh, especially the roof heads ones which is slightly flared this backing plate filled up more of them that was good so i got more even pressure across them um it was talkier it didn't stall out it felt i had really good control not vibey at all it felt more enjoyable to use it's not much bigger than this as you saw the da12 I'm struggling to see where that's beneficial over the DA8 with a 3 inch pad. What I will say is that the fourth rotation was definitely more capable with a 5 inch pad than the DA8 is with a 5 inch pad. It, it is supposed to be more aggressive and more performant and it clearly was. So I would say that's a fantastic tool um, for doing larger areas with a 5 inch pad. Probably wouldn't use the Rupes pad that I had because it's slightly flanged or flared um, but the, the Lake Country HDO pads which are designed for force rotation kind of like straight sided so you get uh, much more control over that we benefit a bit of insight for you so that pairing is very very good and uh, then the, the bit if you get into a point where it's really detailed after that I would say you probably want to be reaching for a nano polisher nano polisher reviews that come up uh, later anyway hope that's been of use to you and interest um, I can see you in the next one I think when I'm just uh, working out what to do next with these let me know in the comments if there's anything else you would like to know because i know i haven't covered everything here and you might have some more specific questions let me know and i'll endeavor to answer them thanks very much for watching see you in the next one